What's up, Trove Heights fam? Who's excited for the word today on a Sunday morning? Come on, if you're watching online, hope you're excited. Let's give it up for our online family one more time. They watch every week. Hey, y'all, a uh, huge milestone we hit in the life of our young church. Last week, shout out to you guys watching online, everybody in the room, we hit 500 subscribers on YouTube. That's pretty cool. That's a big milestone. Celebrate that. Thank you guys for riding with us every week and for being a part of what God is doing, uh, whether you're in Nashville or somewhere else. Now, if you are in Nashville, I want to highly encourage you to come get in the room with us on a Sunday. I believe it'll bless your life. It'll be the best part of your week. That's our goal. And uh, you will get filled with faith. You'll find community. There's some great things happening. And the little plug here I'll throw on the front end is Sunday, August 27th will be our two-year anniversary. You just heard Chad talk about that. But invite somebody, get in the room. I'll go ahead and mark that down. Like nothing is gonna keep me from that day because I'm telling you that day, I've got a special word for you that I've already got brewing here more than a month ahead that I believe God is gonna propel us into year three of our church with. So get in the room. We wanna see you here, okay? It's gonna be an amazing Sunday that week. But we are gonna close our our Faith Wheel series next week, y'all. We've been in it for 47 months. It's been awesome, but we're going to close next week uh, with our Faith Wheel series. And then in the first week of August, we move into a season of 21 days of prayer and fasting as a church. Um, we're going to start a new series on prayer. I'll tell you more about that next week, but I want you to lock in with us. There's a lot coming up as we kind of get back in our routines after getting away from summer vacations, kids going back to school. Because y'all, it's wild. Kids go back to school in like two, three weeks. It's crazy. Summer's flying by. He said, amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Get the kids back to school. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a great summer so far. And we have now seen to date 118 people say yes to Jesus in one of our services here at Trove Heights. That's the best part of what we do. And I love what God is building. Thank you for being a part of it. Uh, if we've never met, my name is Kevin, along with my wife, Megan. Uh, we are the pastors here at uh, this young church that God is beginning to grow and, and do some new things in. And we are currently in process of trying to find our own space in Jesus' name. If you're new around here, there's just a lot of exciting things coming down the line. We're gonna keep you up to date. And, and really because of that in particular for our church, we personally, as the pastors of the church, are in a big faith season ourselves. I mean, we're in a faith season in so many ways, but the biggest way is for our church. God, where are you, where are you taking us? Where are you moving us to? And if you're new uh, around here, you just started coming recently, or maybe you haven't been around in a while, it's amazing how much changes in the first two years of a church. I mean, in the first year, you know, we're a baby. We ain't even walking yet. We're trying to figure it out. Now we're kind of in, we're in the tail end of year two. We're walking around, head bobbing all crazy, trying to figure out what we're doing, you know. And now we're, we're getting into that stage where God is beginning to develop some things. And we really have a strong culture, a strong team, unity. And I love what God is building. But I believe in order for it to continue to grow and go to levels that we believe God has called us to, I believe it's gonna take me and you putting our faith together and watching what God will do. Scripture says that where two or more are gathered on a particular thing, that's where God shows up. So I can have all the faith in the world, but if you don't have any faith with me, chances are we're not gonna see the full potential of what God wants to do quite yet. But what can happen with all of the faith in the room and see what the Lord can do like that song says? And that's my goal out of this series is really to stir up our faith so that we can move in faith together. Uh, today, we're gonna look at a man named Abraham, Abraham in the book of Genesis. And I talked about Abraham a couple weeks ago, but today I'm gonna kind of break down a little bit of his life and his journey. Um, and I'm gonna give you on the front end of this, I'm gonna give you a little, uh, some of you uh, note takers, historians, scholars, you're gonna like the front end of this message, all right? I'm gonna give you a little background of our, of our father Abraham today. And uh, then we're gonna talk about how it applies to us in the world that we live in. So uh, I wanna dig right into this thing, man. I'm, I'm ready for what God's gonna do. I'm ready for what he's gonna speak. This thing has been stirring in me for uh, a week now. We had a... Uh, 48 hour Trove Heights worship writing retreat this week, y'all. A uh, team of six of us went off site, literally in the middle of nowhere, just us and God. And we walked away with 11 brand new songs, Trove Heights worship originals, y'all. I'm fired up. I'm fi so I'm just telling you, I'm gonna be on another level this morning. Where's my folks on another level today? Come on, I need y'all to, to help me preach, okay? It's gonna be a, a good message and I believe it's gonna impact you. The title of this message today is Go and I'll Show. Go and I'll Show and I'll show. Faith is the foundation of Christianity as a whole. We've been unpacking this now for eight weeks or so. And I believe it's important that I teach you, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how to develop strong faith because I can teach you about faith all day and what faith will do, but you gotta do some stuff. That's why the series is called Faith Will. Faith will do some stuff. And so I believe that as we walked in here today, some of us came in just with the mindset of, I'm just going to a church service. I'm checking a box. 
Maybe you walked in in that mindset. Maybe you walked in like, I just got here because somebody, they, they dragged me here. Like I just, I just came because they made me come. Uh, and if you came for any of those reasons, man, we are so glad that you're here, okay? Maybe you're here because you're expectant for God to do something in your life in the season that you're in. Maybe you're here because you don't know what else to do. You're at the end of your rope with a certain situation or thing that you're believing God for, and you're like, this is my last effort. I just want you to know that when you're down to nothing, God is up to something. Come on, somebody, he is. And I believe he's gonna do that today. But I believe that as I give you the front end of this message, it's gonna be the only other end of some things that we do. Go and I'll show. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven, it says we walk by faith and not by sight, which means we go before we can see. And that's challenging in the world that we live in today. We live in a world that says, let me see and then I'll go. But everything throughout God's word is, I want you to go and then you'll see. Go and I'll show. Let's start in Genesis chapter 12. We're gonna break down um, a little bit of the life of Abraham and then we'll look at how it applies to us here today in 2023 and the world that we live in. Genesis chapter 12, verse one. This is the first moment in scripture where Abraham really shows up to us. If, if you don't know anything about the Bible and you're brand new to all this, watching online, you're brand new. Uh, Abraham is what we would call the father of faith. It doesn't say that in scripture, but that's what we would call him in church circles, Christian circles. He's the father of faith. You can go to the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 11 and 12. And you'll see all these faith figures. Abraham's probably the biggest faith figure, and rightfully so, as we break some of this down. But all throughout Genesis 1 through 11, we lead up, and then Genesis 12, 1, we finally see the first conversation between God and Abraham, Father Abraham, okay? Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, it says, The Lord had said to Abram, now, God would later change his name. This is from the very beginning. He said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. We're gonna come back to that. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. All right, let's fast forward to Genesis chapter 17 real quick. I'll give you a second to flip there and then we'll have it on the screen. I'm gonna kind of bounce around here and we're gonna fast forward through Abraham's life. Uh, Genesis chapter 17, verse one. Uh, now real quick, Genesis chapter 12, verse one. If you go in the verses right behind those first three, you'll see that Abraham was 75 years old when he had his first conversation with God that is recorded. Okay, 75, take note of that. Genesis 17, one. Five chapters later, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Go and I'll show. Go and I'll show. It's all throughout this theme. Verse, seven, verse 17 of chapter 17, they end up having their first child, Isaac, and it says that he's 100 years old, okay? So 17 verses, we see another at least nine months pass. He's now 100 years old, all right? Fast forward to Genesis 22. Go five more chapters. Genesis 22, very first verse. It says, sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, all that you have, the one you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. Go and I'll show. Uh, now, I wanna kinda walk through this real quick before we get to the point where he actually goes to the mountain with Isaac. He starts in Genesis 12 and he's 75 years old. You fast forward five chapters, Genesis 17, he's now 99, turns 100 years old in Genesis 17. Now, many scholars, if you look at Hebrew, they believe that Isaac was probably around 37 years old when Abraham would have taken him to be sacrificed, okay? Now, now, if you don't know this story, God tells Abraham, Genesis 22, I want you to wake up, I want you to take your son Isaac, the one you've waited on for 100 years, and I want you to go to a mountain and kill him and sacrifice him to me. Now that's crazy. I don't care what your background is, that's wild. Okay, now that's the Old Testament, all right? Now, now, long story short, he did not kill Isaac. God was testing him. We're gonna talk more about that. But God said, nope, now I know you trust me, okay? So all that said, when we get the lead up to this story, which is really one of the greatest faith acts and stories in scripture, and it's actually what we would call a shadow and type of Jesus. God sent his one and only son, and he tells Abraham in Genesis 22, I want you to take your one and only son and sacrifice him. Shadow and type of Jesus, Old Testament to New Testament, okay? Uh, now, I'm gonna give you a little math breakdown. Where's my math people in the house? Math people, nobody's, okay, we're not good at numbers here, okay? I know a little bit of math, all right? I can do a little bit of math, but Genesis uh, chapter 12, he's 75. 
And God says, I want you to leave from all you know, sacrifice everything you know, let it go. And I want you to go and I'll show you. Well, where do I go, God? I'll show you. No, I mean like, which way do I go? I'll show you. Wait, but, but like really, right or left, just go and I'll show you. That's all the instructions he gives him. Okay, Abraham packs up his family, his tents, his livestock, everything that he has, and he just goes on this journey and leaves everything he knows at 75. Now, I did this uh, a few years ago with my family at 35. Now, I was pretty comfortable where I was at 35, but could you imagine being in the same place for 75 years? And then God's like, time to go. You're like, hold up, I'm established here. Like, God, I'm comfortable. This is where I do my thing at. Everybody knows me. I know everybody. I know how to get to the store the fastest way possible and buy what I need when I need. Like, I know it all. I, I got this. I know, I know how to do everything here I need to do. And God's like, go and I'll show. All right, you fast forward. Now he said, go and I'll show you all these great things. I'm gonna make you into a great nation. I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you kids. He's like, you know, I'm 75, right? 75. Now, look, side note, if this was me and I was 75, I'd be like, I don't even want a kid no more. I'm good. I'm 75. Those days are behind me, all right? Now, back in those days, people lived for hundreds of years. Literally, people were living for eight, 900 years before the great flood happened. That's all in the Old Testament. Y'all, there is amazing stuff in scripture. A dude lived almost a thousand years in the, in the Old Testament. Y'all should go check it out. It's amazing. Why do drugs when you do scripture? I'm just saying there's great stuff in there, okay? There's good stuff in there. You fast forward to Genesis 17. He's now 99 turns 100. So 20 five years later, and God is telling him the same thing. Hey, I want you to, I want you to go and I'll show. You're going to have a lot of kids, great nation. And I know Abraham's thinking, you just told me this 25 years ago and ain't nothing happened, God. God's like, I know, go and I'll show. Okay, fine. All right. Now in between there, which we're going to unpack in a minute, Abraham tries to take this thing into his own hands and we'll see what that calls and how it applies to us. But then you fast forward and you get to Genesis 22. He's finally had a child at 100 years old. Sarah, his wife, is 90 years old. They have a child. His name is Isaac. And so then he's 37. Now, I am 38 years old. This would be like my dad coming to me and be like, Kevin, hop in the car, grab a knife and some wood. We're going, I'm gonna be like, hold, say what, what, say what, dad? What you talking about? What are we, we're going hunting? Yeah, we're going hunting for you. No, I don't, I don't know what it would be like. I don't know what it would be like, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I love my dad and my dad ain't gonna touch me. We ain't going up on a mountain. Ain't nobody sacrificing me, okay? 37? No, come on now, that ain't happening. Now, I thought always when I read this story, this dude was like 11. I can overpower an 11 year old if I had to. You know my son is 12 and he still can't take me down, okay? I can, still, I can still take my son down. He tries, he's getting there. It's gonna be tough one day. But 37? Nah, bro, not me. We ain't doing all that. But this is where we find him, 37. Now, if you do the math, that would make Abraham 137. Let's do some math real quick. How many years is that? 75 to 137. That means it's been 62 years, okay? This journey with God speaking to Abraham started 62 years ago. God blesses him gives him what he's always longed for and dreamed of. And he did it in a miracle type of way at a hundred years old. And then he says, all right, it's been 62 years. You know what? I've been telling you your whole life to go and I'll show. Let's do this one more time. Take your 37 year old son, your only son who you love with every part of your being. And I want you to go sacrifice him. Go and I'll show where God to the mountain that I'll show you. Go and I'll show. For 62 years, God's been telling the father of faith to go and I'll show. Now, every one of them was a different type of scenario. At first, this was a, hey, if you trust that I'm gonna do what I've promised I'm gonna do in your life, I want you to get up and leave everything you know. And that is the gospel right there. Everything you wanna see God do in your life starts on the end of you leaving the life that you've lived and going to the life that God wants to, wants to give you. Everything in scripture, this is the gospel, okay? So then he's journeying along the way, and the longer you've been on the journey, the more you start to question things. We're gonna unpack all this in just a moment. But I wanna give you kind of the buildup. Then you get to Genesis chapter 22. Now Abraham is blessed. He's got everything he wants, 137 years old. I mean, I think at this point, like God, I've been following you long enough. I don't even need no more miracles. I'm good. You've done enough. And God's like, nope, go and I'll show. And the way this applies to us today is I want you to understand that Abraham was 137 years old following God now, talking, walking with God for 62 years. And 62 years later, God's still asking him to go, move, do, go, and I'll show. Now I'm 38 years old. I've been following God now for 10 years. And for the last 10 years, I can tell you wholeheartedly and confidently that God continues to tell me, go, and I'll show. 
If he did it with Abraham for 62 years, he's going to do it with me and you the entire time that we are walking with him and following him. And I think we get this twisted in America today. We believe that we show up as a Christian, we arrive and it's like, I'm here now. Let's ride this thing on into the sunset into heaven. And if you are stepping into deeper relationship and levels with God, God is going to continue to ask you to go and I'll show. This is the premise of a relationship with God. You never arrive. You can never have all that God has to offer you. That's why our vision is very simple. We want to help you dream big, search deep, find more and live a rich life with Jesus. The rich life with Jesus is a never ending supply of goodness and grace and mercy and love and power and presence. It's never ending. You can have as much as you want, but it's up to you. Are you going to go so you can let God show? That's how this applies to us today. You see so many different instances in scripture that I'll break down here in just a moment. John chapter two, Jesus' very first miracle, he turns water into wine. He's never done a miracle, but he tells these people who don't know who he is because they've never seen power. He's never done a miracle. They know he's a teacher. They don't know anything about it. His mother rolls up and she's like, Jesus, they have a problem. They ran out of wine. And Jesus is like, that ain't a need. And she's like, do something about it. The water's a need, y'all. Wine ain't a need. I'm just saying, all right? And so he's like, all right, cool. And he looks at these servants. He says, there's six stone water jars over there. Go grab those, fill them up with water, take the water to the, to the master of the, the party of the ceremony and, and let him taste it. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'd be like, bro, I'm not gonna take water to my master. We need wine, like wine, but wine and water don't equate to the same thing, okay? They don't do the same thing. But you know what they had to do was just go and I'll show. And so this is Jesus' very first miracle. They go, they fill it up with water. Now, sometime after the exchange of water going into the pitcher on the way to the master, at some point it turned into wine. But they started with water. Go and I'll show you know, you can't get what you want to see God do if you don't move towards it. And that's really what I want you to hear today on the front end. You'll never see what you won't move towards. You, towards, toward, I'm from Alabama, y'all. English majors, I need your help, okay? <laughs> you cannot, you, you got to know this today. If you're new to your faith, you cannot have a relationship with God and stay where you're at. You can't. This is me and you included. I don't care how long you've been following Jesus. I don't care how many Bible verses you know, how many songs you can sing. Y'all, I can go way back, old school church with you. None of that matters to God. God wants to know what are you doing today? Are you moving today? Are you seeking me today? That is the premise of the vision of our church. The more you seek, the more you find. That's the rich life with Jesus. You gotta constantly be going and moving. Moses at the burning bush. If you go back into Exodus, Moses, Moses shows up to the burning bush. He's been in the wilderness for 40 years. God speaks to him out of a burning bush. And he was not smoking the bush, y'all. I'm just saying, it wasn't that kind of bush, all right? God shows up to him at the burning bush and he's like, hold up, what's happening right here? And he sees the bush, it's burning, but it's not burning. He walks over to him and God says, yeah, you, you, I want you to go to Egypt and you're gonna free all these Israelites, a million of them. And Moses starts doing all this, what, what, what is how, what's going on? And God's like, no, 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 go and I'll show. So then he even gives him a sign before he ever goes. He's like, okay, okay, you got all these, you got all these issues and all these things that you want to know about before you go, Moses. So what do you have in your hand? And he says, I've got a rod. I got a staff in my hand. He says, throw your staff down and it turns into a snake. And he said, this same rod that you hold in your hand will be the rod that you lead the people of Israel out of free, out of slavery from Egypt. Because all God needs from you is what's in your hand. Go and I'll show that's all you got to do. Okay. Look, let's look at Luke chapter 17. This is a whole different story. Jesus is traveling along Samaria and Galilee. It says, as he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, master have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Go and I'll show. But, but Jesus, I want you to touch me and make me clean. And he's like, well, you go walking and the cleaning will happen as you start walking. Because we don't show up and, and cleaned up to get to God. We go to God to get cleaned up. You gotta go and I'll show is what he's telling us today. Go and I'll show. They were cleansed as they went. First Kings chapter 18, let's go back to the Old Testament again. We see Elijah the prophet. It has not rained in three years. No rain in three years, okay? So this would be like, we've been on this Trovite journey for three years. 
This would be like, we moved here, we get ready to launch a church and it has not rained. And y'all show up here today and I'm like, y'all, it's gonna rain. And you're like, nah, bro, it ain't gonna rain. It ain't raining three. Like, I promise you, it's gonna rain. Well, this is how it happened. God tells Elijah, after a long time in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, go and present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the land. Go and I'll show. But God, what if it doesn't happen? No, 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 I just need you to go. That's all I need you to do. You do the going, I'll do the showing. That's what God's telling somebody today. You do the going, he'll do the showing. The problem is we wanna see it all right here in front of us before we ever make a move. And the longer you sit back and wait and don't move, you are operating in no faith. Because faith will, faith moves, faith goes. Go and I'll show. And so again, you can have as much of Jesus as you want on this journey. You can find as much of God and as much of the things of God as he wants you to have if you just go. And this is the way I'll present it as I give you three problems that we face today. You can't find what you won't look for. You can't. You go looking, it's all through scripture. If you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with all your heart is what God told us in Jeremiah 29, 13. All your heart. You gotta get after it. You gotta constantly seek and search for more. We have three problems today. Why is it so hard for us to make a faith move without, without knowing what comes next? How do we do this go and I'll show thing? Well, here's three problems and we all face them. If you hadn't faced them yet today, you will probably face them today, okay? You'll definitely face them tomorrow and the next day, okay? Number one, our problem is we have to see to believe. This is a big problem for so many of us. Prove it, you prove it. I have a brother who's very far from God and we were raised in the same household, same, same godly uh, parents and raised, in faith, uh, raised on faith, raised in church. And as we talk today, and we're, we're both grown uh, men making our own decisions for ourselves. And he has at some point decided that he doesn't believe all that. That was kind of force fed to us. We don't believe all that. And uh, his, his problem, whenever he calls and we'll, we'll, we'll get into these moments where he wants to argue, I just say, I'm, I'm not gonna argue it with you. He always says the same thing. This is not a problem that it, it, need, it takes faith. It takes faith to do this thing. Like you can't see God. You don't see Jesus. Like you can't see nothing. I know, but I know too much about him to doubt him. Come on, son. he's done way too much in my life. I can't help. But, but they don't want to hear that because I wanna see it. You show me the money, so to speak. You prove it. You prove it, you prove it, and I'll believe. We even see this after Jesus is resurrected from the dead and he pops through walls on the disciples and the ladies who went to the tomb, Mary and Martha, and he shows up and you got this dude that we call today Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas said, unless I see it and touch it, I won't believe. And we read the Bible, don't we? And we're like, this Thomas guy, what's wrong with this Thomas guy? This stinking Thomas guy. Thomas guy's doubter. We are Thomas. Me and you are Thomas. We do this every day in our lives. Every single day you do this, you doubt God. I doubt God. I was telling somebody the other day, uh, I'm so faith-filled, y'all. Uh, has this series been helping anybody? Hope the, hopefully this has been helping you, encouraging you. I was having a great conversation this morning with uh, one of our team members, Mike, and he said, man, I can't even tell you. Like, we are, we are feeling the effects of the faith you're given. And I, man, it just fired me up. And I thought that's what I wanna see happen. But let me also tell you, I doubt God every day. Because we live in a world where we can't see God. So I have to continue to stir up my faith because I have to move in a way that says, I'm gonna believe in order to see, not I have to see in order to believe. Okay, now this is the premise of this Christian faith. If you don't like that, ain't nothing I can do. That's the way God set it up, okay? Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, we walk by faith and not by sight. Okay, faith is the evidence of things hoped for, uh, the things unseen, the things hoped for and unseen, okay? The substance, there's gotta be substance to your faith. I can see a faith-filled person on the front row during worship on Sunday morning. I see the faith-filled people when they're worshiping and they're crying and they're shouting out to Jesus because faith will do some stuff. I've seen enough to know to this point, but I had to start somewhere where I believed before I ever saw a thing. And that's very challenging in the world that we live in because we want all the proof in the world. You see Jesus in Matthew chapter 16, he has an interaction with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now we love to do the same thing here with the Pharisees that we do with Doubting Thomas. And we read the Pharisees and we're like, these Pharisees, man, they are horrible people. But you and I are Pharisees by nature. The only way I'm not a Pharisee is with some more of Jesus in my life. I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and be a doubting Pharisee, which is why I tell you every, every week, on Monday morning, get in your first 15 and spend time with Jesus first and he'll bless the rest. 
I, need, I don't, I don't want to wake up and be a Pharisee just doubting all day. Show me, prove it, God. I'm going to go into prayer and say, God, I already know that you're going to do it because it says so in your word that I am more than a conqueror, that I am blessed. I'm, a, I'm, not, I'm the head and not the tail. Like God will do it. Y'all got to do it. We actually wrote a song uh, this week while we were at our Trove Heights worship retreat called God Will Do It. And I was like, for Trove Heights, it's God Will Do It. But for Trove Heights, it's G-O-D apostrophe L-L. God will do it, okay? Come on, somebody. God, he'll do it, all right? Matthew chapter 16, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. It says, they came to Jesus and they tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. Now catch Jesus' reply. And this is a gut punch for us as we dig into this. He replied, when evening comes, you say, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning today, it will be stormy for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign, but none will be given it. Whoo, that is strong right there. He said, you, look, you want a sign? You came in church on Sunday morning like, God, show me and I'll lift a hand. God said, you ain't gonna get nothing today. Your expectation will determine your experience. And if you walk in here today going, God, I just already know you're here. You just do your thing. I'm here. I'm a word. Oh, he'll show up every time. But the ones who walk in and say, if they play my song, then I'll feel Jesus. We ain't playing that song today. That's what Jesus said. He said, no, 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 no. If you look for a sign, you are a wicked and adulterous generation. That is strong language from Jesus. And we look at these Pharisees. We're like, I can't believe they would tell him to give them a sign. But we do this every day in our lives if we're not careful. I don't want to do this. In Matthew chapter 17, you go on and you see Jesus tell his, one of his disciples, Peter, again, somebody who knows too much about him to doubt him. He has a conversation with him and he says, hey, they're talking about the taxes. What do we pay? Caesar, this, that, and the other. He said, look, okay, let's just pay our taxes, all right? Because you should pay your taxes, everybody. All right, do that. That's good words from the preacher today, okay? And he says, look, if you need some money, because we ain't got no money, he said, go to the lake and I want you to drop a line and you're going to catch a fish. And when you, get the, when you catch the fish, just pull, pull the money to pay the taxes out of his mouth. <laughs> now, y'all, that's funny to me. If I told you to do that, you'd be like, boy, you are crazy. What are you talking about? I ain't going, first of all, I'm not going fishing. And second of all, if I did, there ain't going to be no money in no fish's mouth. Like, that's wild. That's crazy. But this is exactly what he tells him. He says, he says uh, but so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake, throw out your line, take the first fish, you catch. There's a word right here for somebody. The first moment you move in faith, God can move. The first moment, the first fish, fish you catch, open its mouth and you'll find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. Go to the lake, go and I'll show. Here's what I want you to catch out of this. It is impossible to go look for something in faith that God told you and not find it. If God told you and you move in faith before you see it, you will always find it. Now look, God told us, I knew, I knew that I knew that I knew it's time to move across the country and plant a church in a place where we don't know a soul. And it's May of 2020 and we all got COVID. <laughs> God, God, I'm gonna need a few, more, a few more details about all that before I make that move. God, that cannot be God. But we prayed, we fasted, we worked with our pastor. We asked him to pray with us. Like we need some counsel, let's tell us, you know, because listen, if you move without someone affirming your move that hears from God, you might be moving at the wrong time. I'm just saying, you gotta have someone in your corner that can pray with you and guide you and lead you and speak into your life. And we made the move because I knew what God told me. I knew what he showed me and then I prayed and I fasted and I went all in because when it's time to go, you gotta do whatever it takes to make that move happen if you know God's telling you. Because the longer you sit back and don't move, the longer you are gonna see God do nothing in your life. And how many Christians leave the faith, so to speak, because, well, I tried that Christian thing and God didn't do nothing. Listen, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you follow Jesus with every part of your life, you wake up with him every day, you seek him, you follow after him, you get hungry for him, oh, he'll show up, he'll do things in your life that you never could have imagined because my Bible and your Bible says that he can do more than we ask, think, or imagine. Whatever you've seen, he can do more. Come on, somebody. Whatever you believe for, he can do more. And I know I get fired up because God has done too much in my life for me to just sit back and coast through this thing and just one day maybe we'll get there to heaven. Maybe I'll make it. No, God has called you to trample on the heads of snakes and scorpions is what scripture says. He's called you to be blessed, to give you more abundance, multiplication in your life. And while that may not mean things monetarily, while I hope that it is, 
None of that is guaranteed, but what is guaranteed is a, an overabundance of his power and his presence, but you gotta operate in faith. What does it take to go in faith and operate when I can't see it all? I gotta, I gotta see it before I believe it. You gotta be able to move, go, and I'll show. Second problem we have is that we have to have the details first. Now, this is a big key, detail-oriented people. Now, um, I don't know about y'all, like maybe some of the fellas, I, I can just be like, you tell me where we're going today. I'm just, uh, cool, I'm there. But how many of y'all are like, what time? What do I wear? Uh, how fast are we gonna drive? Like, do I need to fix my hair? Who's gonna be there? Am I gonna see anybody? Like, we ask all these, we have to have all these details, all these details, okay? I, we have to have all the details first because we want certainty before we leave to go somewhere else. But God says, no, I need you to just leave it all and go. You see an interaction with a rich man in the New Testament, we'll talk about more here in a moment, where he tells him that exact thing. I, I want, he said, what does it take to get to heaven? What does it take to receive eternal life? And Jesus looks at the, the rich young man and he said, well, it's pretty simple. Get rid of everything you have and leave it and come follow me. Cool. All your money, your house, your cars, come on, just follow me. It's that simple. And it says that this man left and he was saddened because if we're not careful, we are the ones that are blocking our own blessing. How many of us are praying for God to move a mountain? Praying for God to move a mountain? Well, I wanna to submit to us today that maybe the mountain you are asking God to move is your flesh that you need to move out of the way. And that's what God told me this week. He's like, yeah, there's things I've asked you to do and you're not doing. You wanna see this great miracle and you're like, God's gonna move the mountain, but you are the mountain. Get yourself out of the way. That's the problem is too many times we're just in the way of what God wants to do. God's like, if you just get out of the way and make some room for me, I'll show you all that you want and need in your life because I wanna see God do exceedingly and abundantly more than I can ask. We all have to have details in moments before we make a move. You see it with Abraham, father of faith. God's been telling him to go and I'll show. He's been doing this, but between Genesis 12 and 75 years old and Genesis 17 at 100 years old, again, he's about halfway there on the way to this first child that he doesn't have. Genesis 15, okay? Genesis 12, he's 75. Fast forward three chapters. If we had 25 years and five chapters, let's just say we're halfway in between there. Let's call it 13 years. Let's say, let's say he is 88 years old at this point. Still no kid. 13 years ago, God said, you're gonna have a kid. No kid at this point. Genesis 15, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. He said, Abram, don't be afraid. I'm your shield and your very great reward. But Abraham responded and said, what can you give me since I remain childless? He starts saying, I don't have any details. You have said all this to me before, God. I haven't seen a thing. How am I supposed to believe? And he said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him and said, no, what you think you know is not what you're supposed to know. What my word says is what you're supposed to know. And that's what God wants somebody to know today is this book right here is all you need to know. Get out of the way. Quit trying to break it down and figure it out and formulate it and try Trust this word. You get this word in you, it'll come out of you and you'll follow the word. The word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. But what we want it to be is a spotlight to shine way down the road. And God said, you just take one step at a time, just a lamp to your feet, one step at a time in faith. You just move on the things that I've told you. And that's when God shows up. I gotta have all the details though, God. I need, I need some help. And God's like, listen, you don't need no details. In the New Testament, he rolls up to a man who has been lame since birth at the pool of Bethesda. And this man's laying on his mat every day. He tries to crawl into the water when it, when it spews up because people would get healed in this water and he never can make it. And Jesus rolls up and heals him and he like heals him. And then he just looks at him. He's like, and you can see like the man's probably like, something feels different. And God's like, go go. The miracle had already happened, but he needed some, some reassurance. I need some details. And God said, no, no, Jesus said, I want you to get up and go. And matter of fact, you don't even need the mat anymore. Get up, take the mat, get out of here, go get rid of that thing. You don't even need it no more. But are you sure? No, I'm, I'm sure you just need to go. And I think some of us, as we go, like these lepers, as you go, you're gonna watch God do miracles in your life. This is my challenge for us today. Whatever God's been telling you today, it's go time. Today is the moment to move. Today is not the day to figure out all the details. Today is the day to walk out of here and be like, I'm making the phone call. I'm sending the email. I'm gonna give my tithe. I'm gonna, whatever that looks like for you, that is what you need to do today. It's go time. I don't need all the details. I just need to trust 
God, because he said that my presence will go with you, which means everywhere you step your foot, which means as you do this, God's like, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there, I'm right there. Yeah, you just keep doing that. I'm gonna be there with you. Everywhere you go, I'll be with you. We all wanna follow Jesus, but we don't wanna go anywhere. And you cannot go unless you follow. But you can't follow unless you go. I gotta move with Jesus. The third problem we have is that we question everything. <laughs> if you have kids, you know all about this, man. My kids question everything. They are, they are 10 and 12, about to be 13. They question everything. I, I, I'll say, I can say something like, come on over here. It's time to eat. They'll be like, why? I'm like, because it's time to eat. It's time to eat food. That's why, because it's time to eat. It's time to get in a bath. Why? Like I get why about everything. We question everything. Why? Then I'll say, hey, when you do this, don't press the red button. Because if you got kids, you know what I'm talking about. And they'll be like, well, what's going to happen if I do? I'll be like, why don't you press it and see what I no, I, don't, I don't say that to my kid. I do not say that. I'm like, because if you do that, you're going to go see Jesus today. That's why you don't do that, okay? Don't, don't do whatever that thing. But why? Why? You start questioning. You ask all these things. Uh, I did this one time. My wife, y'all, I love my wife to death. And she likes to pray pranks on me, okay? If you, if you don't follow her on social media, uh, you should do that. Because every now and then, you might get a clip of her pranking me. And I didn't even know there was a clip of it. Like, it just happens, okay? She's like a sniper with that camera. She'll be behind, like, walls and stuff like this, watching me. And like, I'll be eating, y'all, your boy, I, I, how many of y'all love ice cream? Ice cream people in the house? Oh, oh yes, yes, woo, come on. I love ice cream and when I eat it, I dance. That's what I do. I, I, it makes me happy, it brings me joy in my life, okay? And she will sniper me with the video camera. I won't even know she's there. I'll be hitting some kind of crazy move. I ain't gonna show y'all my dance skills because I, I, I just don't wanna do that in church, okay? I don't know what it'll look like. But she'll sniper me with the video camera. And then one day we go in a, we go in a Taco Bell drive-thru. Now, where's my Taco Bell people at? Anybody, come on. Oh, y'all are the safe folks today. Some of y'all would say, no, you're not saved. I don't know which side you fall on, but we go in the Taco Bell drive-thru and we're ordering. And uh, we're, listen, when you're tired, you make bad decisions. Taco Bell's where I go when I'm tired, okay? And we're sitting there in the drive-thru and uh, I'm ordering and I place the order and Megan looks at me and she's like, I, I, need, I need you to order me a drink. I'm like, yeah, what's that? She's like, she's like it's, uh, order the velvety pinkity drinkity. And I was like, say what? Yeah, yeah, the, the velvety pinkity drinkity. I was like, that ain't a drink. That ain't a real thing. That is not. She's like, yeah, just, just order it. Just ask it. So I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, hold on one second. I'm like, you're lying. You're lying. No, I'm, I swear. I want one. Get me, order me a velvety pinkety drink. If she was in here, she'd be dying right now. She's back there serving Trove Heights kids. Y'all, y'all give it up for Trove Heights kids. Sir. <laughs> and so I'm having this conniption moment and I turn to order it. And I'm like, I need a, you are, you are lying right now. I know, I mean, I am conflicted here. And so finally I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm just gonna order the drink. I was like, y'all got like a, a, like a velvet, like pink drink. Y'all got a, a velvet pink drink. She's like, say what? What is it, sir? I'm like, you're lying. She's like, ask velvety pinkity drinkity. So I'm like, man, this is stupid. I want to get out of the show. I'm like, I need a large velvety pinkity drinkity. She said, sir, we don't have that. I'm like, you are lying to me right now. What kind of jokes are you playing on me right now? I was questioning everything in that moment. And we do this with God in our lives on a daily basis almost. God's like, I want you to go say this to that. But I want you to go apologize. Because how many of you know, every time God asks you to do something, it's something you really normally don't want to do. I need you to go apologize. But you don't know what they did to me, Jesus. Actually, I do. I was there. I saw it. That's what he said. I saw what happened. And you need to go first. You need to make the phone call. But Jesus, you don't understand. I, I, my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than, I understand. I promise you. He's like, just go. And we do this to God. We question everything. Abraham did this in Genesis 17. It says he fell face down when God told him once again at hundred years old, it's been 25 years since he said, you're going to have a son. And he's like, you're going to have a son. And he fell face down and he laughed and said to himself, will a son be born to me at hundred years old? <laughs> That's ridiculous. And then he looks at Sarah and he's like, she's going to bear a child at 90. And he's just laughing and questioning everything. And God said, listen, Listen, your wife, Sarah, will bear you a son and you will call him Isaac because God is telling you he's put a dream in your heart and he's already put a name and a purpose on it. All you got to do is trust and believe. Don't question everything. The more you question God, the more you will sit still and wait. 
And I think too many of us are praying for things that we're procrastinating about moving towards. And you will not see what you don't move towards. I gotta, I gotta go and he'll show Mark chapter six. Jesus is going through his hometown and he's performing miracles and he's preaching and he's teaching. And it says that as he's preaching and teaching, the people in his hometown, they start going, wait a second. Isn't that, isn't that Jesus? Oh yeah, that's the carpenter's son. Wait a second, where is he getting all this stuff from? Who gave him this authority? They start questioning everything. And it says in verse five, he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. It doesn't say that he wouldn't do many miracles there. He said, it said he couldn't, he could not do any miracles with the people who were questioning all his authority and power and everything that he has to offer. Because we get so much more concerned with why and how than who. And you know, all the promises and blessings of God are not about the promises and blessings of God. They're about God. Everything in this book is about Jesus, y'all. It's not about like, I want all the goodness and grace and mercy. I want all the good things that God, that God has to offer. And I believe you can be blessed and I believe God can do great things in your life and you can see miracles. But the best part of the journey is more of Jesus. That's the best part of the journey. But we get so caught up in the whys and the hows and then we question the who and we never make a move. So we never experience God like the person to our left or right in worship. Why are they always crying? Why are they always in a moment of just passionately worshiping God? Because they're more concerned with the who than the why and the how. Because if he does not do what I'm asking him to do, I will be okay because I've got Jesus, everybody. I just need more of Jesus. You get more of Jesus, that's what you need. Mark chapter nine, a man comes to Jesus and his son is demon possessed. And Jesus looks at him and he tells him, all right, cool, I'm gonna come. And he says, well, if you can do anything, please master, if you can do anything. And Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So essentially this man said, if, if, if you can, and Jesus said, no, 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 if you can. And God is saying that to some of us today. While you're walking in here and you're going, man, God, this is my last effort. If you can do anything. And God's like, no, if you can, if you can believe, just watch what the Lord will do. Anything can happen. Anything is possible. I love these songs we're singing, but it's up to your faith. Your faith will do it is what we talked about last week. Your faith will do it. You got to lean in in faith. So what do we do about this? Three solutions. How do we get to a place where we move in faith today? When we walk out of here, I'm going to move and operate in faith, even though I don't have the details, even though I can't see it all, even though I got questions, how can I do it? Number one, you got to change what you look at. Change what you look at. Mark chapter eight, Jesus rolls up to Bethesda. They brought a blind man to him, it says, and he begged him to touch him. This is very key to catch verse 23. So Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up and he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell anyone in the town. This is very key. You got to change what you look at before Jesus did the miracle. Now Jesus could have done the miracle right there. But the problem is he's been in this condition for a long time. And when you're blind, you see this all through scripture, blind, blind beggars would sit in the same place their entire life. They, they found their posted street corner. That's where I met. And so Jesus had to, had to get him to understand, hey, I want to change your surroundings and circumstances so I can get you in the right posture. Too many of us are asking God to change our situation, but we don't want to change our surroundings. And God says, you need to get out of town. Some of you, you need to leave the people you've been doing life with. You need to leave the shows you've been watching behind, the music you've been listening to, the thing that you've been doing. You're, you're operating in such a way where you want God to leave you in your mess and love you there. But God loves you too much to leave you in the condition that he found you. He, got, he has to get you out of the place sometimes. He did the miracle after he told him to go get out of the town. Go and I'll show. Let's go. I'm going to take you. I'm going to lead you. Mark chapter five, see another, another woman, uh, daughter, the daughter of this husband and wife has died. She's dead. They ask Jesus, they come do something. They have faith. It's all I got left is some faith. And so Jesus goes with him. He shows up. And when he gets there, Mark chapter five, he tells them, oh, she's not dead. She's asleep. And it says in verse 40, they ridiculed him. And right behind that, it says, but when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him. He spoke to the girl and immediately the girl arose and walked for she was 12 
years of age. Sometimes you got to tell some people and some things in your life to get out. You got to get out. I can't, I want more of Jesus. And if you're not going to go with me, well, then I'm going to have you get out. God wants to do some great things in your life, but he cannot leave you in the condition he found you. The power and presence and love of God is too great to leave you there. Some of us have to make some decisions. You make some decisions today and God will bring you some new power and revelation and goodness and grace. But you got to get, you got to make some decisions today to tell some people to get out. You got to change what you look at. Numbers chapter 13. I'm giving you a lot of Bible here today. At Trove Heights, we stand on the word of God. I'm going to give you the Bible. Numbers chapter 13. You see 12 spies go into the promised land to scope it out because they've been trying to get to this thing for 40 years and they're finally there. Can we take it? They send 12 spies out. Joshua and Caleb are two of them. The other 10 are not named because when you don't operate in faith, no one remembers your name. When you operate in faith, you see God do great things and everybody goes, hey, you remember that story? By the way, these are the stories they're gonna tell about Trove Heights one day. I don't care what I see in front of me. I know what he showed me. I know what he said to me. And when we know what he said, we're gonna move. We're gonna watch God change people's lives and save people. I believe we're gonna pack out rooms. We're gonna watch thousands of people come and know the glory and the power and presence of God. And I don't know how else to get you fired up other than to say that God will do it if you ask him to do it and you trust him and you move, he'll do it. He will. I'm telling you, these two spies come back with a report different than the other 10. The 10 came back and said, the giants are too big. There's no way we can conquer this land. And Joshua and Caleb said, are y'all crazy? Did you see the land? Cause God's telling you to look at the miracle, not what's in front of the miracle. The miracle is there. It's yours for the taking, but it's all dependent upon how you look at it. Cause if you look at the problems, you'll never move. If you look at the potential and the miracle, man, God will do some amazing things. Point number two, what you have to do solution today is you gotta focus on what you can't see. Focus on what you can't see. Again, we walk by faith, not by sight. Second Corinthians chapter four, Paul writes to the Corinthian church. He says in verse 18, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen, money, cars, houses, clothes, all this stuff is temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. They're eternal, which means we need to always have our focus on heaven. Come on, how many of y'all grew up in church? Moms, dads, grandparents, y'all got praying grandparents, great grandparents, aunts, uncles. We grew up in church, man. Y'all know in in the old days, we used to sing about heaven, didn't we? We used to sing about heaven all the time. We'd hear some, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. I'll fly. Okay, that's it. We're going to do that next week in the worship set, song number one, when y'all come back next Sunday, okay? No, we ain't going to do that. They were singing about heaven because heaven is what we're after, everybody. And we are after populating heaven and plundering hell. I'm not trying to go there all by myself. I'm not trying to take all y'all with me. Let's go get some more. Let's take Nashville to heaven with us and watch God get glory. Come on, give him praise if you believe that today. I'm telling you, that's where our focus has to be. If my focus stays on the temporary things, I'll never move towards what God has for me. We got to focus on the things that are unseen because lack of focus on Jesus will create impatience on the journey. You know, Jesus, it says that as he was going to the cross, it says, it says for the joy set before him, he went to the cross to endure that pain that you and I will never go through. And the joy set before him was you and me 2000 years ago. He couldn't see us. We weren't there. He was a physical man, God in the flesh on the way to the most painful, awful thing that you and I could never imagine going through but he had something set before him that his eyes were on that he couldn't see, but he knew it. And for the joy set before him, which was you, your life, your heart, your eternity, he kept focused and he went to that cross because he he could have skipped that cross if he wanted to. Let's be real. He was God in the flesh. He could have said, you know what? I'm gonna do it a different way. He could have been hanging on the cross and been like, this is too painful. You know what? I'm gonna get get off here, turn everybody to frogs. That's what he, he could have done that. He's Jesus, he's God in the flesh. But for the joy set before him, he said, no, no, no. I see Chad. I see Brandy. I see Brandon. I see David. I see Jillian. I've got that. That's what I'm on. I'm after them. I'm after that. You got to keep it in front of you. Focus on what you can't see. And then point number three today that I want you to leave with is I want somebody to hear, hear this from the Holy Spirit today. Just go. Don't wait. 
It's go time. There's nothing greater that you can do when you leave here today other than move in faith on the things God has been telling you for, I don't know how long he's been telling you to do certain things. Some of you know it's some, some people you need to get rid of in your life. It's some of the things that you do that you know you're not supposed to be doing. Some of the places you go, some of the things that you allow into your, your spirit and your eyes and ears into your soul. And you know it's time to let them go. Some of you, you know, it's, it's time to start tithing. It's time to start giving financially. That is a faith move. Some of you, every week we talk about worship with our giving at the end and we invite you to participate if you'd like, but there's no pressure. But God is just saying, come on, trust me. Come on, move in faith today. Some of you, it's time to go through the growth track here in the couple weeks and be a part of the dream team. Some of you, it's time to make a commitment to say, I'm gonna go all in. I'm gonna get planted in the house. And God's just saying, come on, it's go time. There's no reason to wait. Wake up on Monday and do your first 15. You hear them talking about it every week. It's go time. It's time to do this. Psalms 143, 10, it says, teach me to do your will for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. Today, God is leading some of us and we're just not moving. And God's calling, he's beckoning to some of us today, watching online, he's saying, just, just come on, let me lead you and I'm gonna lead you on level ground. I know that life you've been living is rocky. It's an emotional roller coaster. It's painful, I get it. And you know he gets it because it says in scripture that he endured everything that you and I did when he was walking this earth as a man. It says that he, he, can, he can empathize with us, not sympathize, empathize, he's been there. And he knows what you're dealing with and he's saying, just go. God will show you as you go. First Samuel chapter 23, King David. You see him going through this process where he starts questioning God. He wants to double check what God said. Chapter 23, verse one, it says, it was reported to David that the Philistines were raiding Keilah and looting the grain. So David went in prayer to God. Should I go after these Philistines and teach them a lesson? And God said to him, go. Attack the Philistines and save Keilah. But David's men said, we live in fear of our lives right here in Judah. How can you think of going down to Keilah in the thick of the Philistines? So David, this is why you gotta have faith-filled people in your life. God gave David a word, then he turned to the people and they spoke something completely different than what God said. And because of that, David questioned and he goes back to God, but this is how good God is. He's full of grace for you today, everybody. He's so full of grace for you. He said, all right, it's cool. Come, come back and ask again. He said, God, how do I do it? And God said, get going. It's time to go. Stop praying about what God told you and go. If he told you, if he said it, what are you waiting for? The only thing on the other end of you exchanging your faith for God's promise is just you making a step. You never lose in an exchange with God. He's saying it's time to go, go, and I'll show. Because the longer you wait, the more you'll question. You go back through this. You go back through the. I need some details. I got some questions. God's saying, no, 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 no. Just, just go. Trust me. Come on, trust me. Faith will. Faith will go, and I'll show. And the children of Israel trying to take the promised land. We talked about that a second ago. Ten spies, twelve spies went out. Before they ever got there, Joshua chapter 18, before they send them all out and some of them have started to actually move in and they're starting to believe it and they're starting to buy in. Okay, let's go. There's 12 tribes. Five of them have already taken their inheritance. Seven still haven't. Verse one, the whole assembly of the Israelites gathered at Shiloh and they set up the tent of meeting there. The country was brought under their control, but there were still seven Israelite tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. So Joshua said to the Israelites, please hear this from me, Trove Heights family. This is from me to you, okay? What are you waiting for? How long will you wait to take possession of what God has given you? How long will you wait? You don't have to wait anymore. It's go time, everybody. It's time to move on it. How long will you wait? God's been saying this to some of us for a long time. And I believe that today is the day where somebody is about to move in faith and see your life changed, to see your marriage restored, to see that addiction that you've been struggling with for years, that is such a problem. God can do a mighty work, everybody. How long will you wait? Just go. It's go time before they ever got here. It all started with go and I'll show. They roll up to Jericho, Joshua and the battle of Jericho. Joshua chapter six, you rewind 12 chapters. It says, now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. No one went in, no one came out. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, 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 I have given Jericho into your hand. It's king, it's mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city. All you men of war, you should go around the city once. This you shall do six days. 
And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram, ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up every man straight before him. There's a formula in this moment right here. It all started with go and I'll show. He says, I need you to see it first. I hope, I hope you can catch my passion in this thing today. I want you to see what God has for your life. It's greater, everybody. It's better. It's bigger. It's abundance. It's love. It's grace. It's mercy. It's a power-filled life full of the presence of God. It's there. I want you to see it because when you see it, you will go and he'll show you. It all started with you shall. You shall do this. You shall do that. See it? Now you shall do this. And when you shall, then it shall because faith will. Faith will make you move. And then when you move, that same faith you moved with will make the mountain crumble, everybody. You shall, and then it shall. Going precedes showing every single time with God. You just gotta go. We love to come in church and do the shout thing. But we don't ever make a move in our weekdays. We don't sit with Jesus. We don't spend time with God. We don't get rid of the world's, all the junk that the world has to offer. And God is saying, look, I, your shout is cool and all, but I want you to go. I want you to walk with me. Let me talk to you. Let me spend some time with you. Because if you go and you walk, the shout will work. You work the walk and the shout will work. You just got to go. It's go time, everybody. I love what it says right here. It shall come to pass. Faith will in Mark chapter 16, it says the signs will accompany those who believe. Faith filled, faith will kind of people. These are the signs. In my name, they will do some stuff. They'll drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it won't hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Faith will. By a show of hands today, I want you to participate with me on this. How many of you would like more of the Holy Spirit in your life? Anybody? I want more of the Holy Spirit's power and presence in my life. Can I give you some good news today and tell you that you can have all that you want? You can never have all of it. You can have as much as you want. It says in scripture, those who come hungry and thirsty, they will be filled. They will be satisfied. Go and I'll show. I love this quote from A.W. Tozer. He says, the Holy Spirit never enters a man and then lets him live like the world. Because you can't live worldly and expect to have a spirit-filled life. It's impossible. You gotta go and he'll show. And this is the key today as we close. Acts 2.38, Peter replied as he's speaking to the first gathering of Christians. Jesus is ascended into heaven. The church is birthed in Acts chapter two, verse one. Find it here in verse 38. He's preaching a powerful message. One of the very first messages that you'll see in scripture after Jesus has risen and gone back to heaven, okay? It says, Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Go and I'll show. You ever see somebody that's so spirit filled and you're like, I want that? It's on the other end of go. When you go, he'll show. When you make a move, he'll give. When you open up, he'll bring. I'm just telling you, he will. Mark chapter 10, Jesus looked at him and loved him. The one thing you lack, the rich young ruler we talked about. One thing you lack, he said, go, sell and, go, go and sell everything you have and give to the poor and then you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. I want somebody to hear today that you can't go until you leave. And everything you want in this relationship with God and in this Christian faith journey is on the other end of leaving all that you have, everything that you've loved and been comfortable with. God's saying, if you just give it all to me, if you just give it all to me, come on, trust me, go and I'll show. If you give your family to God, the enemy can't take your family. You, anything you put in the hands of Jesus, the enemy can't take from Jesus, everybody. Go and I'll show. I don't know what you're dealing with here today. I feel this thing so strong. Worship was so powerful on the front end. I knew God was gonna move. And I believe that today is somebody's breakthrough moment. And the breakthrough is on the other end of go. Go. Let it go. Leave it all behind. I don't know what you came in church expecting today, but I, I came in church today maybe to get a little bit uncomfortable and say, God, I want you to have your way. I want you to do your thing with me, God. I want something different than I've always experienced. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty for more. 
And God has that available for you today. It's on the other end of go, but you can't go till you leave. Today, God, I ask you to show up in this room in these final few minutes that we have together, God, in these final few minutes online. Holy Spirit, I feel your presence in this place. There are some of us, God, that you've been dealing with for so very long, and you've been asking, us for, uh, asking for us to hand it over, to leave all that, we, all that we have. You've got a better life, and today you are tugging on some of our hearts to make a move, God. God, some of us are scared to make the move because it'll make life different, but I ask you to show us as we take the step all that you have to offer, God. We want more. We're hungry. We're thirsty. We're crying out to you, Jesus, for more, for greater, for mercy. Oh, God, we love you today. Come on, can you just have a moment right there by yourself, just you and God? Nobody's paying attention to you. God, today I need you, Jesus. God, today I open up my mouth and I worship you and I ask you to move me, God, towards greater things, Jesus. Do, do more. Show me things I've never seen, oh, Jesus. Hungry and thirsty for your power, your presence, your spirit, oh God. God, for anybody in here today who's had trouble making the move you've asked them to make, I pray that today something changes in Jesus' name. As I'm praying, something is shifting and I feel it. And I pray right now, God, that you speak directly to them. Come on, give them, give them what they need and what they need to, to know and hear and feel today, God, as they're making a move in faith. Thank you for what you're doing in this house, oh Jesus. If you came in this room today and you're watching online and you're, you're far from God, you've never even made a move toward Jesus. Let me just tell you today, you have an opportunity to make the greatest move that you've ever made. You can't go with Jesus until you leave all that you knew. So I'm inviting you today to get up and leave. You don't need the mat anymore. You don't need to lay out and be by the pool anymore. It's time to go in faith. And all it requires is for you to say a prayer. But what matters is that you believe this in your heart. You believe it in your heart. And all you gotta do is say a prayer with me, something like this, say, Jesus, today I give you my life. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, you are my savior, you're my Lord. I'm gonna live for you for the rest of my days. I'm moving today, Jesus, toward all that you have for me. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said it. Amen. Amen. Come on. Can we celebrate anybody that said yes to Jesus? Come on. Let's celebrate that. <laughs> That's amazing. Before we start, we're going to give you an opportunity here on the end of the service to come get prayer with our team. Our prayer partners are down front. I just want to ask you to make a move. If you know you got to come leave something at the altar symbolically, come do it. Don't, don't just come in and do the church thing. Let God do something great in your life. If you just said yes to Jesus today, you have a next step here in this moment. I want you to pull the connect card out. If you came in the room today, you got a physical connect card. Pull that out, put it in your lap real quick. If you're watching online, you can actually text the word connect to the number that you'll see on your screen right there. And when you do that, we're gonna send you one text back, only one, we're not gonna spam text you. And there will be a link in there for you to click our digital connect card. It'll only take you about 60 seconds to fill out. But notify us today of your decision. If you said yes to Jesus, we wanna know about that. We wanna help pastor you through what comes next because we are a church of next steps. There's a journey we're going on. We wanna help you be able to go on the journey today, okay? If you're online, you can do the same thing. If you, if you check one of those boxes, you said yes to Jesus, you recommitted your life to Jesus, you wanna be baptized or talk to a pastor. Four options there. I'm gonna be the one that personally reaches out to you. Ladies, my wife will reach out to you. We wanna connect with you. We wanna help you on this journey, okay? If it's your first time here, let us know of that. There's a box you can check there. We would love to know how you found out about us and be able to connect the dots at a deeper level because we don't just want this to be a place you come on Sunday morning to church. We want this to be people you do life with. There's amazing community and family here. We wanna help you get plugged in. We wanna help you with next steps. So please, 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 Fill that out for us, and we want to pastor you as best as we can today, okay? Uh, before we leave, we're going to worship God with our giving here in the moment. We always do that as a worshipful act on the end of our service. Uh, but if this is your first time with us at Trove Heights, feel no pressure to give today. This service is our gift to you watching online. Thank you for however you showed up and however you got here. We're just grateful that you're here. We, play, we pray that it blessed you today. We pray that you're encouraged, you're full of faith. 
All you guys at Cultural Heights Home, man, thank you for the way that you give. You heard him talk about it on the front end. Man, we, we, we made an impact on Serve Day, y'all. It was awesome. I love what God's doing. I love what he's building in this house. We're doing things in faith. We have more missions opportunities that'll be coming up in the months ahead, outreach opportunities, and just all God's doing for a potential building of our own. Come on, Jesus. I'm just telling you, like, I don't know what God's getting ready to do, but I, I, it's gonna be amazing, and I can't wait to update you. So thank you for the way that you give. This is what we wanna ask you to do here before we leave today, is we're asking you to talk to God and ask him what you should do. Ask him what you should do. If he asks you to give, you just do whatever he lays on your heart. You, you and God. And today, let's worship as we give. Can you stand with me today? There's a lot ahead, man. Stay tuned. Stay close on social media. Stay close to YouTube. You can get connected with our team out in the lobby. But stay close. Get planted. Today, let me remind you to go and he'll show. If you need prayer, our prayer partners are down front. Come get prayed for as we worship. Let's lift our hands across the place. Let's worship God with our giving. God, we love you today. We give you glory, honor, and praise for what you've done in this service. Today, we give you back what's already yours. Thank you for the way that you provide for us. Bless what we give today. Use it to further your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's worship. Come on. Can you imagine with all of the faith what the Lord can do, and it's gonna happen, just let the way make it through, he's gonna move, he's gonna move, and can you imagine, with all of the faith in the room, what the Lord can do, what the Lord can do, and it's gonna happen, so just let the way Go into your week, go starting tomorrow, then to Tuesday, then to Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And when we get back in this room next Sunday, we get to tell of the stories that God has done in our lives this coming week. We love y'all, man. We thank y'all so much for being in the room today. Remember, our prayer team is still up in the front praying. So if you need prayer, do not wait. Come on, go and I'll show. We'll see you back Sunday at 1030. Y'all have a blessed week.